Hi everybody, Terry Muesley here, Scale Model Podcast and Starship Modeler. I'm going to tell you a little bit about watercolors and their use for panel line washing today. Um, I'm going to be working on Crusher Joe Minerva Kit 400 scale from Hasegawa. Left on the bottom, I'll show you a little bit on the top. Um, it's a nice kit, it's a really nice kit, and I like the, uh, the return to full size plans, which is... I think a really nice touch. I'll be showing you some of the uh, AK watercolor pencils to use to make the washes here. Uh, you can use a lot of different water soluble things. Vallejo makes a series of them, a few others do. There's also oil colors. I have a set of oil paints, photo retouch paints, so I just make my own. Um, the advantage to the watercolor ones, of course, is you clean them up with water. All you need are some some swabs, little swabs for fine stuff, and um, and the watercolor pencils or watercolor um, sticks or paint tubes and such. But the pencils are great. They this pack gives you a really wide variety of colors. Um, I kind of like the Derwent series of watercolor pencils. Um, compositionally, it, when I'm doing effects and such, streaking and such, I think these work a little better. The uh, AK ones have a little different binding in them. Um, it takes a little bit more work, but it can be done. You just have to learn how to do it. Um, the paint here, I'll give you a quick tip. It's a white ship. Uh, white's tough, we all know that. So what I do when I do a white, is I actually use the Vallejo white and a little bit of their wolf gray. It's a light gray with a little bit of a blue tint. I mix it up in a little vial here and a little eyedropper bottle. You can get these at art stores. You can get these at various places. I mix it up once. So after that, um, if I have to touch up, I have the same paint. It's about a somewhere between 10, 15% uh, wolf gray in the white. It's enough to help the coverage and give it some better opacity and not make it look like a toy. It tones it down just a little bit. It's a little bit blue, so that actually looks more white. Um, if you wanted to use a little bit of a, a greenish gray or a tannish gray, that would be fine too, um, depending on your subject. The panels here, this is a Curtis gray. That is the undersurface of uh, like P40s, things like that. And this is the wolf gray on its own. So that gives you an idea. The other key you're gonna need for water soluble washes, whether they're pan uh, pastel pigments or watercolor pigments or anything, is uh, a flow aid. I can't find my original dryer right now. It's around here somewhere. Liquitex makes a slow dry, which is a drying retarder for water systems, and flow aid, which is a uh, surface agent. It, surface active agent, it will reduce the surface tension. This lets the water flow quickly through panel lines. Um, beyond that, uh, we're just ready to start uh, showing you how to work with stuff. All right, we're back everybody. I have here a little ceramic palette um, meant for watercolors, other things like that. You can see here, there is liquid in here, but everything is settled out. So these are not completely soluble, uh, which helps us for this project. I have several different colors in there. What I'll show you now is I'll use one of the, I don't have a Derwent Burnt Umber one yet, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take a little bit of water, I don't need that much water. <clears throat> A couple old brushes here. One of them is worse than the other one. That's what I'll use. Now the watercolor pencils are kind of designed to to draw with a little bit and this is not really the right paper for it. And then use that to hydrate it and draw down. So when you're you're doing your illustration or something you can go up to the edge to make it a bright edge and then draw your pigment out. 
then that dries and you can do it more. You can put another color on it, that sort of thing. So what we'll do here is I'm just going to put this in here in the water and I'm just going to start scraping off pigment into the water. This is burnt umber. This is one of the pigments that everyone should be familiar with. It's a, a typical um, brown um, for weathering, for dirt, for muds. Raw umber looks a little bit more like that color there until I mix it up. That looks pretty good. We'll do a little bit more. Watercolors also come in uh, your, your classic uh, kits where they're just in the little wells and you get pigment onto your brush from the well. Those are nice. Uh, they tend to be really transparent, which has its own uses. These watercolor pencils are not really transparent watercolors. So there, I'll set that aside. This is my flow aid. I'm going to put in, I'll put two drops in. That's probably more than enough. Mix it up again. My water over here. There we go. Let me mix these other ones up. And I, you can actually, <laughs> once you get the dog hair out of it, uh, you can let these dry and rehydrate them. That'll, that'll work a few times if you keep it clean. Um, it may work for quite a while if you keep it really clean. So we got a smoky color. We got this kind of a bluish tan color. I mean, a bluish gray color. I think that's exhaust. And this darker brown, which looks maybe a little bit redder than the burnt umber. Also a useful color. Now what you've got here is a palette. You can mix and match when you start doing your um, your panel line washes. You can put this different colors in the same panel line, they'll mix together. So you have something that's not uniform. It's up to you whether you want this thing to look uniform or you want it to look uh, more heterogeneous. I've also got the Vallejo wash. I'm gonna put that on a little piece of palette paper here. Now I've figured out that that's, this stuff is very strong. So, what I'll do is put a little bit of water down, take some of this, mix it up to dilute it. If you don't have tester kits you can make, you can get some scrap styrene bits that'll let you test things first. We've got a nice pointy brush here. So all you'll do is you'll get some on there. You'll touch it just like any other wash. You can draw it right along, get a little bit of moisture in there and then come back on if you want, add some more. You can add more later. You can remove this uh, if, if you've got too much in there. It's hard to see with the metallic I know, but we'll set that aside. Okay, let me adjust the light here so it's easier for everyone to see. All right, now I've got these all these nice little panel lines here. I can just give it a touch flow it along and this is too much on there you see that so I can just come back and I can remove it if it's too much no big deal there that's what I'm looking for now there is another trick you can do for this um, too much 
and that's to, to hydrate the, the lines first if you want to with some water to let it flow better. But I've generally found if I just brush over, then come in and I touch it, touch, touch it back in, it works just fine. This more tannish pa uh, panel here, I'll throw the umber on it, see how that looks. If I don't like it, I can change it later. Or come over it with that other color. I probably will try that first. You'll notice this settles out pretty quickly, so you got to keep giving it a stir. Now the advantages to water are are pretty major. Instead of having to use the uh, a turpenoid or a, a thinner. Uh, petroleum type thinner you can just use water to remove this excess now you've got to have a bit of a, a gloss coat over it like any other panel wash that always helps if you use enamels you're gonna need to use your thinners to pull that off enamels do work really well for this sort of thing uh, so do oils so if you're if you're into it great and if you've already invested then this is just one more tool for you this is also something that can be done later on um, after you've kind of essentially finished everything you can um, come back over it with this and that's where some of the other watercolor techniques are going to be useful this brush is maybe just a little big for the for the job here I'm going to switch to this finer brush. There is a panel line at this demarcation here, so I can come in and try to do that. That one I'm probably going to try to get a little bit heavier, so I'll come on it a few times. Meanwhile, that first bit of pigment I laid down is probably getting pretty close to being being dry. I think this one might actually need one more drop of flowy in there to really help it out. It's a matter of experimentation. If you don't like what it's done uh, with this stuff, it's easy to remove. Yeah, there we go. It's flowing a lot better now. Obviously, I haven't tricked out all the details yet. Yeah, that's better. So, you'll get used to it. You'll have to uh, do a little bit of work. Like anything else, it's a new thing to learn. That umber there looks pretty good on that. Let's see what it looks like on uh, just a white thing, a white spot here. So I would encourage you to use multiple shades of things.
Uh, it gives a little bit of visual eyes, a uh, little bit of eye candy for people to look at. It'll draw out the difference and it'll look worse here uh, when it's freshly laid down than when I remove the rest of it. So let's say those ones I can come back over that gray with a little bit of this umber, dirty it up a little bit, but not necessarily do it um, uniformly. Just kind of come in there at various places and we'll see how that looks. So you want to think about what you're trying to achieve. Are you just trying to mark off panel lines? Are you trying to show exhaust or other um, specific weathering, like dirt and mud, like where rain might come down and draw just grime down instead of um, a panel detailing? So these are the little Tamiya swabs. They're very tightly wound. <clears throat> these are gun cleaning swabs, also pretty tightly wound. If you want to use your standard cotton swabs, you can do that. Um, they tend to be a bit looser. So what I, what I do with them generally is I will tighten them down a little bit like this. until I've got that. So let's see if I can pull some off of there. Moisten your swab. I generally get rid of the excess, punch it down a little bit. Then I can come back in, touch to remove it. And you'll see you'll start building up. You don't want to build it up to the point where you're now painting, although often that's just, that's not a bad thing. You're just adding a little bit of grime. You can clean that. Keep using your swab a few times. See, I removed a bit much there. That was probably still wet. The other thing, of course, you can do with any of these is remember which way airflow or anything goes and just remove in that direction. So if you do streak, it's an appropriate streak. I'm sure that's still too wet. The excess. I went pretty heavy here. There's not actually a panel line there. So I'll just come in and, and completely remove it. Then you want to look at this later on under a good light and see if there's any excess that you can get rid of. Um, it's pretty simple work. We've all seen this before. That's getting a little too dirty. See what that looks like. Yeah, I'm kind of liking that. It's kind of irregular. It's a little brown and a little a little gray. That's brown. I don't like that as, as a brown line here. I would like that if it was on an aircraft or something uh, at a smaller scale to give just, you know, dirt. Uh, then I might come in with some, some gray to show more of a grime. 
I will probably keep these brown, but uh, maybe give them just a touch of the gray overhead. Let's play around a little bit with the Vallejo wash. That is significantly darker. Let's find something good for that. Flows very well, even diluted with water. I just touched it to the top and it flows very well. You can see it move along. I do like these washes. Um, I just like being able to, to have a whole pack of the watercolor pencils. But you know, if they work, they work. Vallejo has obviously done a good job with the flow agents and such on this. I did test this earlier and it does remove with water. Otherwise, it's, it's kind of dangerous here. I'm going to slide along the joints. Pick up a demarcation. It's a classic lining technique. And I'm using the diluted version here. It's this dark as the diluted version. I wouldn't I wouldn't play around with the neat stuff. So I think you're getting the idea. One more tool for your toolkit. It's looking appropriately grimy down here now. I will probably uh, come back in there with my uh, my cleaning swabs again just to kind of clean that up a little bit more. Make sure there's no obviously kind of paint ring looking areas to it. But the point is to weather it right. The point is to make it look a little grimy, well used. On areas like these that are fully painted, I'm probably going to use my uh, my ink and future technique for that. Although, look, let's have a look. Maybe the uh, Vallejo mix will work well enough to come in and in line. So I painted it gray by hand. I'm going to come in and run this around the edge as a liner. It should pick up all the paneling looks pretty good gonna come across each one of them yeah that's good enough i think looks pretty nice so you do want to make sure you get the, all these areas wet otherwise they'll look a little weird on you So that'll give a good sharp delineation on the gray. Do the other side while I'm at it. Well, I have the same batch of, of pigment thinned down. And I'm just floating in the whole area. Remember gravity here, so keep it flat if you want it to stay where it is. Little excess there. I'm just going to come along with my brush. Yeah, I'll come along with the swab right away. And it was a little dirty, so too much. Clean the edge up a little bit to make sure I didn't get any excess out. Looks pretty good.
Let's see how that works. I think up here I can use the small uh, Tamiya swabs just to get at the little bit I went over on. Still a little wet. Clean off that pigment. Yeah, I should probably give this a couple more minutes to dry. They must have a, a, a flow uh, drying retarder built into this, whereas I don't for my um, just watercolor pigments there. So it takes a little bit longer to dry. That That's good and bad. I mean, it's good for a lot of your weathering techniques if you were taking this and streaking it down like that. It would help. Um, but for the panel washing, you don't need it. So that doesn't look bad. I'm, I'm becoming a fan of these uh, Vallejo panel washes. Again, down here, once it's all done, you can kind of come back in, clean up a little bit. I'll probably give it a couple passes uh, with some different colors, uh, vary it a little bit. I've got a lot of other details to start picking out on that, but that's the idea. You can use these, vary them a lot. I mean, the, the whole idea of them initially was to be able to, and I here's a quick tip before I go on, I'll do a whole thing on this, is to dampen the area first, take your streak in, streak pen in, and draw down a little bit. Then come in with your moisture and just up, oh, it erased it completely. So sometimes if it's dampened, you can just use a, a, a relatively dry paintbrush and draw it all down. But if it doesn't work, just uh, take your swab, remove it. Super easy to work with. So here you go, uh, a lot of uh, lot of techniques to work with. Play around, let me know what you think. Um, next time I'll, I'll start, uh, I'll have this all done here and we'll show some other techniques. Not sure what yet. So until then, for the Scale Model Podcast and occasionally Starship Modeler, this has been Terry Measley. Uh, have fun. Get out there. Try some new techniques. <laughs>